This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and finally, this is the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. I've been waiting a while to get this in for review. It's still not out in the United States, part of the reason we didn't get one until now. It's been out in some Asian countries for several weeks now. It should be out in the U.S. in June, by the way, of 2021, for those who are wondering. So what's the big deal about this? Well, Lenovo Legion gaming laptops have been around for a while, but uh, they're finally just getting it right. You know, it takes several years often to make a product line before you really hit your stride. And we have a QHD Plus display with 16 by 10 aspect ratio on on board. We have Ryzen, which is the latest hotness, and for a reason, it runs cool and it runs fast. So this is a Ryzen 7 5800H processor. And of course, NVIDIA graphics. You got your choice of a 3060 or a 3070, and those are max P wattages, not max Q, for good performance. And there's a lot more to talk about, which we will do now. So the 5 Pro, well, you know, there's a couple of different models. Let's talk about that first. The 5 Pro is the slightly gamery looking model, but it's still relatively speaking on the chill end of gamery. Yes, you have the Legion logo, which I think is supposed to be a Roman Legion's helmet kind of thing, not an upside, upside down Mercedes logo. I don't have any issues with it compared to a dragon head logo on an MSI. You know, it, it's not that out there. There's no RGB body lighting on this. So that's about as blinktastic as you get. So this is one with the 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. That's one of the things that sets it apart. And there is the Legion 5 Not Pro, which is a bit less expensive. And then there's the Legion 7, which is kind of the upsell of this one, which is also a 16 inch laptop, just like this one with a QHD display. But that one goes up to Ryzen 9 and you can go up to the RTX 3080 where this one stops at the RTX 3070. So you got that and what's going on with that? And yes, there will be Intel versions with Intel 11th gen of all of these from Lenovo and the Legion line too. So we'll see after we test those, how they compare to the Ryzen models, all that sort of thing. Obviously, this competes with the Alienware M15 R5 that we just reviewed, and also the ASUS Rogue Strix line. And hey, this one has a webcam. And not just that, it actually has a webcam privacy switch because it's got Lenovo ThinkPad DNA going on too. So you got a little privacy and a little security there. And speaking of security and things like it, a shout out to our sponsor, Trend Micro, and their home network security device. You know, we've done several placements for them over the past year, and I've actually found it invaluable. It's an easy to set up little box, just plug in the include Ethernet cable, use the Android or iOS app to set it up and monitor. But nowadays we have so many devices connected to our home network, from smart fridges to robotic vacuum cleaners to baby monitors. And just even if you're aware of the security issues around those things, keeping up with all of the updates and the security issues can be mind boggling and time consuming. And it takes care of that for you and it lets you know. Of course, it still takes care of PCs too. And in these work from home days and school from home days, you've got your kids to worry about. And we have kids that we take care of and we have to keep an eye on them. And also for some people, there are the seniors who maybe aren't as sharp as it used to be that who you might be caring for at home too. So this way you can set a parental limit on your parents or your kids basically to monitor which websites are going to uh, to block some malicious websites, that sort of thing. You get the idea, set limits, time limits on how much they can use the internet. So be sure to visit the link in the description and use the code LISA20 to get $20 off. And now back to our video. We have an aluminum chassis here and the build quality on this is quite nice. Lenovo does improve every generation considering that they're keeping the price I won't say budget. I mean, this is not a sub thousand dollar laptop because the specs are too high for that, but they keep the prices down by not going too crazy with fancy build qualities. You're not going to get a Seuss Rogue Strix scar removable back plates so that you can customize out of the box or translucent keyboard decks and all that sort of thing. But you are getting something that feels pretty rigid, pretty well made without any creaky seams. And I know there's going to be some of you in the comments who said, I bought last year's Legion 7 and the hinge failed. And that sucks if it happened to you. And I'm sorry to hear that, but Lenovo does say they have redesigned the hinges for this year's model. So that shouldn't be a problem anymore. It's available in our storm gray color, which kind of has blue undertones a little bit. It's fine looking. And there's a stingray white, which I, it's up to you. I mean, at first it seems cool, but to me it makes it look a little chunkier and it is nearly about an inch thick. So it's not a super skinny laptop. It weighs 5.4 pounds, which is 2.45 kilograms. So it's about typical for a 15 inch non ultra thin and light gaming laptop in that respect. It somehow feels a little heavier than that, even though it's not, I don't know, it's the density of it. Being a 16 inch laptop is interesting because it is, well, gee, uh, sort of between a 15 and a 17 inch laptop in terms of size. When I'm using 
using it because of the bigger screen and the added little bit of height you get with that 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, it feels much like using a 17 inch, visually speaking, from looking at that screen, which is nice. In terms of portability, it's not so far off from the 15 inch laptops on the market that I feel like it's a horrible carry or something like that. But you know, it's not an Asus Rogue Zephyrus G15, which we also review, which is you know, a pound lighter and meant to be a sort of ultrabook cross with a gaming laptop. Another nice little touch that they do with the design here is many of the ports are off the back side, which I'm okay with, though some of you might not be thrilled that there isn't a USB-A port on each side. There's only one on the right, and there are three more in the rear. But what they do on the right above the top there, they have little icons, little labels. So, I mean, I don't especially because I cycle through gaming laptops, reviewing them in non-gaming laptops too, and they put the ports at the back and it's like, okay, where was this and where was that? So it takes care of that problem. It's those little things that just really make you like a product. In terms of the game bling and all that sort of thing, we have a four zone backlit keyboard here, not a per key RGB. I'm okay with that. It's up to you though, as to whether you need your WASDs to be a different color than everything else and all that. Again, no body lighting other than the logo on the back side of this, so it's pretty calm and quiet. And you'll manage everything through Lenovo's Vantage software. And if those of you who use Lenovo business laptops are familiar with Vantage, it's almost weird to see it brought over to a Legion and a gaming laptop, but there it is. And you won't see much here for those of you who are power users who want to control your, your GPU overclocking, your fan profiles and all that stuff. They want you to use Lenovo AI to take care of all that. And part of which I'm sure is NVIDIA's Dynamic Boost 2.0 that balances CPU and GPU usage and shared memory and all that sort of thing. So that stuff's not here. You do have MSI Afterburner, third-party software, you know, if you want to do things like overclock your GPU. For our tests, we left it at base default. We didn't do any tweaking, that is. And we put it on the performance profile. And you can get a little sticker above the keyboard that tells you you hit the FN and Q buttons to cycle through the low power profile, the balanced one, and the high performance. So everything was done in the high performance profile. In terms of performance, it's as you would expect, which is to say, excellent. I mean, with Ryzen Zen 3 here, you're really not going to lose, are you? Even if it's the 5800H 8-core CPU versus the 5900HX, which you can get on the Legion 7, should you wish it. I mean, the performance difference between those two CPUs is not exactly huge, so I wouldn't obsess on it too much, especially budget considerations and all those things for some of you out there, right? Performance is excellent on this, and it still smokes Intel 10th generation. We're still waiting to be able to show you our benchmarks for Intel 11th gen to see how it does, but I expect it to be very good, and thermals, again, are excellent because we have this 7 nanometer CPU. Less heat, more efficient. That's a good thing. Intel's, even on their 11th gen, still at 10 nanometers, so I expect thermals to be still better with Ryzen. That said, we have seen some Ryzen gaming laptops whose thermals are not the best because they, it's still, you know, you're running north of four gigahertz when you're playing games or doing something demanding, video editing. So we're still talking a lot of horsepower here. And well, unlike the Alienware M15 R5 we just reviewed, sorry Dell, <laughs> which didn't really have the most robust cooling design, this one is really well cooled. Uh, other than the usual very nice oversized fans with ha that have a very good noise profile, it sounds like a whoosh of air and not like a whine or a screech or I'm going to go deaf and I can't hear my game kind of thing. Look at the heat sink on this thing. I mean, it is beefy. It looks like a vapor chamber style. There's so much metal plating here. The other metal covers, I'll tell you what they're about later, but it's well done, folks. In playing games, mostly demanding AAA titles like Cyberpunk 2077, Ultra, DLS, DLSS on, and ray tracing on, too. I mean, the CPU was at 79 centigrade. Nice. And the GPU temperatures typically were 75 to 76. So the cooling on this is good. The noise profile for a gaming laptop, yes, you'll hear the fans, but still, it's not that bad. It's not as quiet as the Asus Rogue Strix SCAR 15 that I reviewed, which is miraculously, relatively speaking, quiet for a gaming laptop. But this is quieter than most kids on the block, especially anything with the Intel inside 10th gen. Those of you who want to get the most frames from games will be happy to hear that there is a DGPU only mode. You can switch between hybrid graphics and dedicated graphics mode only. That does require a reboot. Also, the HDMI port is directly connected to the NVIDIA GPU. The good news continues on with upgradable 
parts and accessible parts. So you just remove the bottom cover, Phillips head screws. We do have some semi-tenacious plastic clips to work your way around to get that back cover off. You've got two RAM slots on here, DDR4, 3200 megahertz, which is standard Ryzen stuff. And you can get it with 16 gigs of RAM, upgrade it yourself up to 64 and you're good. You have two M.2 SSD slots, NVMe. One of them is populated. Ours came with a 512 gig SSD. Again, you get one, put whatever you want inside of there. The Intel Wi-Fi 6 card, which is an AX200 card with Bluetooth 5.1, that is also socketed and upgradable. And yay, the whole cooling system is right there when you take the cover off. So if you wish to repaste this, you can. Speaking of that, back in January in virtual CES mode there, uh, Lenovo had said they were going to use liquid metal on some models, but they're not doing that. I've heard that's because they thought that users might have a difficult time if they repasted it. They might short their motherboards if they didn't clean it off carefully and properly, whatever it is. So no liquid metal here. But given the temperatures, I'm all right with that. For connectivity, you've got two USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 ports supporting DisplayPort and the rear one supports power delivery. We've got the four USB-A's, like I said, you have HDMI 2.1, and you know, those of you with the fancy pants latest Gen TVs would be happy about that. you got gigabit Ethernet on board and a headphone jack, so pretty well covered as ports go. For the speakers, we have two 2 watt Harman branded speakers with Nehemic 3 Audio, which is the same software that MSI has been using in their gaming laptops for a while. And they're okay. They get pretty loud. They don't have a lot of bass, but they're not like totally tinny either. And they're decent. Not something I would go, whoa, about, but they're all right. The display on this, your only option is a QHD plus display, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Again, that's the plus part of that. So a little bit taller, nicer productivity work. And most modern games I've played have actually had that resolution available. And it doesn't look like it's just stretching the imagery to me. It looks like they're truly running at that resolution. Anyway, it's a very nice display. 165 hertz refresh rates, fast response times on this. Lenovo claims 500 nits of brightness, and we measured 531. Gaming laptops typically don't have very bright displays, in part because they're already consuming a lot of power for the performance part of it, and because people do tend to play indoors and in darker environments. But for those of you who do need to take this outside in a bright place, or you just love the look of brightness when gaming, you have it. The color gamut on this is pretty good. It's not as wide as the Asus Rogue Strix Scar 15 that we reviewed, or the Zephyrus G15, both of which have full P3 coverage. This one doesn't come close. You get full sRGB and you get decent coverage that's competitive with premium gaming laptops on the market. So all in all, it's a very nice looking display. There's no PWM, no complaints, unless you're hoping for that wide gamut that ASUS gives you on the Strix, which is a bit more premium laptop than again, to be fair. And the display supports HDR400, which really isn't that big a deal. I hate to say it's not a very demanding standard, but it does have G-Sync, so yay that. For the keyboard, as I said, it's zone backlit, and it's not super duper tactile. It's pretty low travel. Um, you do get a sense of tactility when you press the keys all the way down. It's okay. Not a type of stream. This is not a ThinkPad, folks. It's not up there with the Asus Rogue keyboards or with some of MSI's better Steel Series laptop keyboards or the mechanical hybrid options that are available on Alienware and some Asus laptops. So how about battery life? Well, because it has Ryzen inside, even if it's a gaming laptop, we have high hopes, don't we? Now, my tests are with very bright AMD's display power saving technology turned off. I haven't found that it really helps battery life that much on the several Ryzen based gaming laptops I've tested this year, but it sure makes the colors look more muted and drops the brightness on the display as well. Yeah. Dropping brightness, okay. Reducing my color gamut, not okay. Anyway, battery life on this with the display set at 200 nits, doing a mix of productivity work, some streaming video, a little bit of Photoshop work, that sort of thing, is at about six hours. And we have an 80 watt hour battery. So that's decent enough for a gaming laptop these days. It's not as high as some of the competitors. Well, I mean, like, again, the Asus Moog Strix and Zephyrus, they have a 90 watt hour battery, so they have a bit of a leg up there, but it's certainly competitive with the Alienware M15R5 in terms of battery life. The charger is weird. When they first announced this in January 2021, they said it would come with a 230 or a 240 watt charger, which would be adequate and appropriate for what we have inside here, but instead they're shipping it with a 300 watt charger. That's a lot of watts, and I really don't know why. And it's actually the same charger they'll give you with the Legion 7, which is available with more high-performance internals. 
So it's big. It's um, Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Nano Heavy. It's sort of like carrying a little Ultrabook with you in terms of the weight. But that said, the footprint is actually the same size as Alienware's 240 watt adapter. It is heavier than the Alienware one, though. So yeah, it's a, it's a heavier carry and certainly bigger than the Asus charger that they're shipping with these days. Well, no matter what you do with it, you, you definitely won't drain the battery while you're playing a game anyway. So that's a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro, again, available June 2021 in the United States, starting at around $15.99 or so. And for that price and for the cooling here and this lovely QHD Plus display, and did I mention how good the cooling is and the performance on this, I really do like it in this price range a lot. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell so you know about them.